welcome to your Flame Fundamentals training. Previously, you looked at how to create animation using the sliders and animation workflows. You'll now take this one step further and look at the animation editor and animation curves. So you'll cover how to access the animation editor, look at the different ways of visualizing animation, animation channel selection, navigating the animation curve, adjusting the animation, and finally, some tools to manipulate the keyframes on the curve. Here you have an animation that was created with a 2D transform timeline effects and composited with the comp timeline effects. To edit the animation, double click on the 2D transform to go into the effects environment. If you see your text on black, you are looking at the result of the 2D transform. To see the timeline composite, change to one of the context views using the pull down menu. Much better. Looking at the sliders, you can see the animation that was previously created. Now you can access the animation editor either as a viewer or in the interface controls. To load the animation editor into a view, you right click on any channel and open that channel in the animation view. You can edit the animation and all your controls are accessed through the context menu. My recommendation is to use the two up view so you're not constantly toggling between your composite and the animation view. The other way to access the animation editor is through the interface. Just click the animation button and this will update the controls. Now this might be familiar to you if you've used other applications, but the animated channels can be displayed in three ways. You have the curves, which maps the animation to a curve, and you can adjust a keyframes value and timing within the animation. Next is the dope sheet, where animated channels are displayed as tracks to control the timings of your animation. You can shift timed animations or stretch them using the dope sheet. The final way to visualize your animation is the info view. This shows your animation in a spreadsheet and you get a more holistic view without sifting through curves or tracks. So you will see a channel value at the current frame, how many keyframes are on a particular channel, and if any expressions have been applied to a certain channel. One final point concerning animated channels in the curves and the dope sheet is that you can identify them by the colored lines under the animated channels. Matching the channel sliders in the interface, the blue line indicates an animation on the channel, and the yellow line indicates a keyframe at the current frame of the animated channel. When looking at the curves display in the animation editor, all your animation channels are arranged in a hierarchy structure. Clicking the scene will select every channel, but you can move down the structure and select groups of channels or individual channels. You can also hold control to add or remove channels from the selection. To help manage the list, you can hide or show channels by twirling the triangles. You can also filter the channel list to display something specific. For example, you could click the pull down and choose to filter by animated or selected channels. So when you toggle the filter channels button, you get a filtered set of channels, making them easier to work with. Now when a channel is selected, its curve will be displayed. This is regardless of the channel being expanded or collapsed in the hierarchy. In addition to this, when you select a channel or channels, they will automatically be framed to the window. This means you will always get full visibility of a curve and keyframes as you navigate the channels list. If you don't prefer any of these behaviors, the selected curve display can be turned off via the gear menu. 
and the automatic framing can be disabled in the framing menu. Once you have selected your animated channel in the channel list, it will be displayed in the main window. One handy point to mention about the curve is that you can't accidentally deselect it in the main window. Typically, channel selection is done in the channel list. So you can click anywhere around the curve and zoom into the curve without fear of losing the channel selection. Even changing tools using the Tools pull down menu will not change the curve selection. If you need to frame the curve to the window, you can click the Frame button or click the channel in the channel list to automatically frame the selected curve. When it comes to editing the animation curve, you can edit the entire curve or the keyframes on the curve. So to affect the entire animation curve, you would select the channel in the channels list and you can access a series of operations via the context menu. To the right of the main window, you will also see a bunch of controls to adjust the channel. So you can adjust the curve horizontally or vertically and reverse or negate the curve as an example. There are also interpolation modes to change the curve behavior between keyframes and the extrapolation modes to change the curve's behavior before and after a keyframed animation. You can also copy and paste an entire curve between channels if required. To focus on specific parts of your animation, you simply select a keyframe and move it around. To constrain the movement of the keyframe, hold SHIFT before dragging the keyframe. To select multiple keyframes, you can either hold CONTROL and click on the keyframes, or hold CONTROL and drag a box selection over the keyframes. Both methods work equally well. Now notice how the menus on the right dynamically switch to the keyframe controls. Any changes to the values will only affect the selection. So you can be very gestural directly on the curve or very specific with your keyframe adjustments in the controls. And like you saw previously, the same operations can be performed on the keyframe selection using either the controls or the context menu. When it comes to working with keyframes, the cursor also has a few tools to perform various tasks. For instance, the default mode is SELECT. This is your general move mode which you've been using so far. This does not add, delete or change keyframe behavior. There are buttons to the right, but the cursor tools may be a faster option. To add additional keyframes, you choose ADD POINTS and click anywhere on the curve. To delete a keyframe, you choose DELETE and click on any keyframes you'd like to remove. The other tool I want to point out is BREAK TANGENT. When you click on a keyframe, this tool breaks the tangent symmetry. This is indicated by the dotted tangent handles. So switching back to SELECT, you can adjust the curve on either side of the keyframe. If you want to lock the tangents together, choose BREAK TANGENT again and click on the keyframe. The tangent lines become solid and the next time you move the tangent, it will snap back into symmetrical alignment. Please move on to the next video and don't forget to like and subscribe to the Flame Learning channel. Thanks for watching.